your dog has been diagnosed with bladder cancer, stick around. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa Rizzo. I'm with Hope Veterinary Oncology Services, and we bring veterinary cancer care closer to home. Unfortunately, bladder cancer is a relatively common cancer that we diagnose in dogs. Dogs are often presented for things like straining to urinate, frequently wanting to go outside to urinate. Sometimes the family will see blood in the urine or the urine will be a bit red tinged. These signs are very similar to what a urinary tract infection looks like. And sometimes dogs will be prescribed antibiotics in hopes that that's all that it is. And sometimes those antibiotics help a patient feel better. The reason for that is because both things can and often are happening at the same time. Bladder cancer disrupts the normal lining of the bladder, which protects you from getting infections. And so often when there's bladder cancer, there's also a urinary tract infection as well. Bladder cancer also causes a lot of inflammation within the bladder. Inflammation within the bladder is not only uncomfortable, but it makes the pet feel like they have to go to the bathroom all the time, even if there's no urine in the bladder. So sometimes you'll see them go outside or be asking to go outside and, and they look like they want to go and they try to go, but nothing comes out. One of the more dangerous problems with bladder cancer is that sometimes it causes an obstruction of that urine flow. And so they go outside to go to the bathroom and nothing comes out because it's being blocked from coming out. That is very dangerous. It is life-threatening to the pet. So how is bladder cancer diagnosed? Sometimes after antibiotics have been tried and they don't seem to be working or they help the pet feel better for a little while, but then the signs come back. Often a veterinarian will do an ultrasound of the bladder. So they'll physically look at the bladder with an ultrasound probe and see a mass there. But does seeing a mass automatically mean that there is a bladder cancer? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Unfortunately, in older dogs, when we see a mass, roughly 95% of the time, it's because there is cancer there. Some masses are caused by inflammation. They're called polyps and they're benign. They often have a pretty distinct appearance compared to bladder cancer, but not always. So how can we tell the difference between the two? Well, biopsy is best. So going in somehow, either with a camera and a little instrument that can take a piece of the tumor or via surgical procedure. So an abdominal surgery to physically open up the bladder, look at it, and take a piece of the abnormal tissue. Both of these tests are, well, invasive and kind of expensive. So there is an easier way to diagnose bladder cancer, and that is with a DNA test. So we can collect a relatively large volume of urine and send that to the lab, and they can look for the DNA that we typically see with the most common bladder cancer. The most common bladder cancer is called transitional cell carcinoma or urothelial carcinoma. We're going to be calling it TCC for short. So roughly 90 to 95% of bladder cancers in dogs turn out to be TCC. And we very commonly can get to that diagnosis with that simple urine sample and the DNA test. So what can we do about bladder cancer? How can we help these patients feel better and can we even cure them? Unfortunately, the answer to the last question is probably not. Bladder cancer is often found in an area of the bladder that makes surgery pretty much impossible. And even when it's found in another area of the bladder where surgery is possible, a lot of times the cancer is not only making that tumor that you can sort of measure and put your eyes on, but it's also sending microscopic cells throughout the bladder wall. And so there's only so much of the bladder you can remove. And a lot of times when we remove the bulky portion of the tumor, those little satellite cells are left behind and they eventually grow into another tumor. Now that's not to say surgery can't be helpful. It often can be when the tumor is found in an area that makes surgery possible just know that it's unlikely to result in a cure. Oftentimes, several months down the line, another tumor will develop. 
But there are ways to delay that from happening, potentially prevent it from happening. And if surgery is not possible at all, there are ways to slow down the growth of the tumor and sometimes even reverse it, at least for a temporary period of time. So there are several medications and supplements that I use in my patients to help them live a better quality of life with bladder cancer. The first thing I want to do is decrease inflammation. These tumors are very inflammatory. They really irritate the bladder. And again, you feel like you have a urinary tract infection all the time. So there are several ways that we can decrease inflammation. The first is with a prescription medication and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These drugs are things like carprofen, paroxicam, medicam, deramax, prevacox. There are a lot of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for dogs, and they're often very well tolerated. Another way to decrease inflammation is with natural supplements. One of those supplements is a CBD supplement or a full spectrum hemp extract. A full spectrum hemp extract has been shown to decrease inflammation in many studies, in many different situations, and in particular in a study looking at dogs with really bad arthritis. The CBD supplement helped them when other medications weren't. So does that mean it will definitely help with inflammation anywhere in the body? Not necessarily, but in a lot of cases it's worth trying. Another supplement that might help decrease inflammation, or at least has been shown in a lot of studies to decrease inflammation and in a variety of situations, is curcumin. So curcumin is a compound or molecule found in the turmeric spice, but it's not enough to just sprinkle some turmeric on your dog's food. There's not enough curcumin in there to result in those anti-inflammatory effects. And it's also not enough to simply swallow regular curcumin or even large volumes of turmeric. It's not, it's not very bioavailable in the body, meaning when you swallow it, the body doesn't just take that curcumin and start using it. There are certain formulations that are needed in order for it to be usable by the body. And one of those formulations is called a liposomal formulation. So you want to look for that if you're going to try curcumin to decrease inflammation. In some cases, when reducing inflammation isn't enough to make a patient comfortable, I may also reach for other, other types of pain relief. But everything I just mentioned is all kind of palliative care, kind of, well, they're band-aids against what the tumor is doing to the body and doing to the bladder. So is there anything we can do to physically reduce the size of that cancer if we can't perform surgery? Well, the answer is yes. There are a couple of oral medications that have been shown to be effective against bladder cancer, and they're medications that you can give at home. These medications are referred to as targeted therapy because they target specific mutations that are found in bladder cancer, and they switch those mutations off. These mutations when they're turned on, cause the cancer cells to grow and grow and divide and divide and divide at an uncontrollable rate. So these cells are no longer listening to the normal rules of the body. Targeted therapy can turn those mechanisms off so that they can no longer divide and divide. Another way we might be able to help dogs with bladder cancer is through diet. There have been a few studies that have shown a diet consisting of whole vegetables, lightly steamed or raw, reduced a dog's risk for developing bladder cancer in particular. So I'm not saying that now that your dog has bladder cancer, if we just feed him or her vegetables, the cancer will go away. But a diet rich in whole foods, specifically vegetables has been shown to help the immune system fight cancer better. Some of the best vegetables to feed would be things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. Again, I'm not saying that this is going to cure cancer, but anything we can do to strengthen the immune system is going to help us fight this battle for as long as possible. Whenever I'm trying to help a patient with any type of cancer, I like to combine as many different treatment options as possible because cancer unfortunately is very smart and it it learns how to resist 
the treatments that you're applying to it. So if we're applying multiple treatments, hopefully we're outsmarting the cancer for longer. So I use those targeted therapies as a direct line of defense against the cancer cells, but then I use the anti-inflammatories to help a patient feel better. And some of those anti-inflammatories can also have anti-cancer properties as well, meaning sometimes they do have a direct effect on the cancer cells. And again, I use diet to try to strengthen the immune system as much as possible. When I combine all of these methods, we often see survival times of about 8 to 12 months. And during that time, patients often have a very good quality of life. We do not accept side effects in veterinary oncology. If any of the medications I'm using, whether it's a palliative medication or those targeted therapies, if they're causing side effects like a decrease in energy, decrease in appetite, maybe diarrhea, changes in lab work, I'm going to change the plan. I'm going to change the dose or I'm going to switch out one drug for another. There are a lot of ways to change the plan to help a patient feel better. Now, sometimes I meet a dog when there's already a urinary tract obstruction. Unfortunately, once the cancer has created that obstruction, it is very difficult to get control of. Sometimes surgery or radiation therapy might be helpful, but radiation therapy and even the medications we use don't work overnight. So if the patient is already obstructed, as I said in the beginning, that is a life-threatening situation. And if we can't relieve that obstruction quickly, unfortunately, it may be time to say goodbye. I also sometimes work with dogs who have very resistant cancers from the outset. So no matter what medication I throw at them, their cancer continues to grow and grow. These situations are not very common at initial diagnosis. But it does happen and you should probably be prepared for it. But again, in many cases, we're able to help patients feel better for a temporary period of time. Now, I know no matter how much time I say, if it's not a cure, it's not long enough. I totally get that. But a lot of these medications are easy to give and they are very well tolerated. And it could lead to you and your family member having many more months of good quality time together. Listen, I know cancer sucks. But there is a little bit of hope. If you do live near a veterinary oncologist, I encourage you to reach out to make an appointment for a consultation. That consultation does not commit you to any one treatment or another, but I do think that the information you gain from that consultation will be very valuable. If you're one of the millions of Americans who do not have easy access to a veterinary oncologist, you can ask your general practitioner if it's okay to reach out to me. I do virtual consultations via Zoom or phone. So I can talk to you about your pet's diagnosis and what your general practitioner has already done. What I can't do via Zoom is make a diagnosis or prescribe any medications. So if you wanted to move forward with treatment, I can help your general practitioner implement a treatment plan wherever they are. So if you're in Yakutat, Alaska or Jackson, Mississippi, I can still help your general veterinarian treat any type of cancer right where they are. Again, my name is Dr. Vanessa Rizzo. I'm with Hope Veterinary Oncology Services, and we bring veterinary cancer care closer to home.